This podcast is brought to you by our friends at Minimal Case. Minimal is so excited about the Pixel 4. They're giving you 25% off your order for the brand new Pixel 4 case that you're going to pick up. The Pixel 4 is beautiful, and you want a case that is so thin and light, it'll keep that phone as beautiful as the day you bought it. And to make that even sweeter, here's 25% off your order. Just use promo code DIGITPIXEL4 at checkout. Because this is a Digit Daily, and you're celebrating the Pixel 4. But you can use this code for any case for any phone. Once again, go to mnmlcase.com and use promo code DGITPIXEL and the number 4 to get 25% off your order. And we thank them for sponsoring this podcast. Good morning, Digit Fam. Adam Dowd here with your next batch of technology goodness. It's two days before Halloween, so it's safe to say if you don't have a costume by now, you're probably screwed. Speaking of Halloween, before the holiday is over, remember to pick up a few extra bags of candy corn, or as I like to call them, Wake Up Pills. This podcast mostly brought to you by Wake Up Pills. It is October 29th, 2019, and this is your Digit Daily. Alphabet is Google's parent company, but for all intents and purposes, it's pretty much Google. So for the rest of this story, when I say Google, mentally substitute the more technically correct Alphabet name. Yes, I could just say it that way myself, but alas, I'm a dick. Rumors abound that Google is looking to buy Fitbit because it makes total sense that literally the only Android OEM to make Android phones but not a watch would buy Fitbit. And side note, wouldn't it be completely awesome if Google bought Fitbit and then owned an entire line of smartwatches that did not run on Android Wear? That would be nice. But then again, we are talking about the same company that owns two different mapping companies and what, like seven messaging services? So I guess never mind, this makes perfect sense. The possibilities here are pretty big. Fitbit has been in financial trouble for some time. It went on something of a buying spree a few years ago, acquiring Coin, Pebble, and Vector, killing off those various projects one by one. But it seems the shoe may be on the other foot now. Fitbit is basically the default not Apple Watch choice when it comes to fitness trackers. Unless, of course, a user has a Samsung phone, in which case, Tizen-based watches are popular. All the same, Fitbit has a community of around 27 million people that probably won't get pissed off at all if Fitbit goes the way of Pebble. After all, Google bought a bunch of intellectual property from Fossil earlier this year and seemingly hasn't done much with it. I'm just not sure what Google's endgame here is. Does it buy Fitbit and let it run on its own, similar to Nest? Does it eliminate a Wear competitor when Google barely develops Wear anymore? It's pretty confusing. There are a lot of possibilities and an equal number of good and bad possibilities. But let's not forget the fact that this is all speculation and nothing more. Rest assured, when and if this actually happens, we will let you know. But there is something that actually did happen this week. Apple quietly released its AirPods Pro to YouTubers and the reviews, which are not reviews, but rather first impression videos dressed up as reviews because the word review is more SEO friendly videos, are dropping. That's a long hyphenate, by the way. There are some notable changes to these AirPods, both from an internal standpoint and from a design standpoint. In terms of that design, they are smaller and more reminiscent of a hairdryer. Go on Twitter for like five seconds and I'm sure you'll see the meme. Speaking of Twitter, one Twitter user named Hunter Walk noted, quote, It's very important that the AirPods Pro look meaningfully different from the outside. Otherwise, when I'm wearing them, people will think they're just the old regular AirPods and that I might be poor. And yeah, basically. Putting aside the design, though, Apple did make some changes that could make the AirPods not a dumpster fire like their predecessors. First, Apple includes three sizes of rubber tips for a better fit and better isolation. Second, Apple included active noise cancellation. Also, speaking of those rubber tips, Apple is using a microphone on the inside of the ear to determine if you're using the right size tips or not. It's pretty slick. There's also a transparency mode that allows noise from the outside to pass through. Apple also included some really neat OS level tricks like super easy pairing that the AirPods have, but also including transparency mode in the control center on your phone. 
The AirPods Pro will cost $249, which is a hefty price tag, considering the best active noise-canceling headphones that you can buy right now are $228. But then again, the Sony WF-1000MX3s don't have as catchy a name, nor do they have an Apple sticker on them, so just GTFO. Overall, I'll wait for the sound guys to get these things in their lab for testing before I pass judgment. In the meantime, regular old iPods are still out there and still trash, so I can still make fun of those. So there's that. But for now, let's head into the roundup! The U.S. might make life even more difficult for Huawei soon as the FCC is set to vote on two proposals designed to help rural cellular providers shake their nasty Huawei habit. The first says that companies that get money from the FCC can't buy Huawei gear. Fine, but I thought they already couldn't. Anyway, the second puts a program in place to actively help rural cell providers identify and replace existing Huawei and ZTE gear. And man, that's not only rejecting Huawei at the door, that's sending the bouncer in to round up all of Huawei's friends and kick them out of the club too. Oh, Elon, Twitter giveth and Twitter taketh away. Elon Musk is set to go to trial over a defamation of character case from when Elon Musk for some damn reason, called rescue worker Vernon Unsworth a pedo guy and then accused him of moving to Thailand to marry a 12-year-old bride, to which Unsworth replied, uh, bro, my wife was 32 when I met her in London, and you've been served. Musk claims that the term pedo guy is a commonly used insult in South Africa, meaning creepy old man, not necessarily a pedophile. And I gotta say, Elon, that's like Facebook levels of BS right there. Look, dude, you're gonna have to pay the guy some money. The only question is how much and when. So let's just pay the guy and let's go home, shall we? Game of Thrones showrunners David Benioff and D.B. Weiss have left a Star Wars trilogy project in order to focus on the $200 million deal they signed with Netflix and just what is it with Star Wars that they can't keep people on board their projects? And the one guy they shouldn't have kept, Ryan Johnson, not only stayed on, but won't shut up about it now. Meanwhile, over in the Marvel Studios, even fired directors can't stay fired. It's just a weird vibe coming from both of those money-printing franchises under the Disney umbrella. Oh, and don't feel bad for Benioff and Weiss. They've got $200 million, so, you know, they'll be fine. Today I learned that U.S. soldiers from just one Iraq base drank up to 864,000 bottles of water per month. And I get it, I mean, it's a desert, but jeez! One commenter in the Reddit thread correctly points out that tactics win battles, but logistics win wars, and it's numbers like this that reinforce that thought. So remember, kids, if you want to win the war, supply lines, supply lines, supply lines. And finally, this one didn't make the newsletter, but I wanted to talk about it anyway, and <laughs> it's my podcast. Last week, Amazon UK offered first-time buyers of Prime Student Subscriptions a £5 discount on the first item they ordered, which is a nice gesture. Until students figured out that the coupon code could be used more than once. Like, a lot more than once. Like on every item they ordered individually by the hundreds. Deodorant. Wipes air fresheners, toothpaste, you name it. And if it costs less than five pounds, it was ordered and reordered and reordered to the tune of hundreds of thousands of pounds. One 19-year-old business student, because of course he was a business student, interviewed by The Sun had a delightful quote, which I'm going to use my delightful English accent to read. We started looking for useful stuff that was a fiver or under and discovered that there was loads that we could get that could be really handy and also some rubbish things that we got just for the hell of it. We'll never need to buy toiletries, cheap novels, highlighter pens, folders, and batteries again during our whole university career and well beyond. It became an addictive game which we called What Can You Possibly Buy For Under A Fiver? And we were pretty inventive. We found some packs of six bottles of beer for $6.99, which meant we were getting them for two pounds a pack, which was a big moment. We were up until 3 a.m. ordering and ordering because we figured at some stage, any minute, Amazon would twig what was happening and pull the plug. But they didn't. 
They didn't indeed. The coupon code kept going throughout the week until Thursday when it was finally stopped. People reached out to Jeff Bezos on Twitter to thank him personally. The whole story is simply a joy to read. So that's going to do it for today's Digit Daily. If you'd like to learn more about any of these stories, check out the links in the show notes and subscribe to our daily newsletter on Digit.com. And if you like what you heard, subscribe, leave a review, and don't forget to tell your friends about DigitDailyPod.com. Once again, I'm Adam Dowd, Dead Technology on Twitter, and we'll talk again tomorrow. Tomorrow.